The isopod device is a vinyl enclosure that's portable that allows us to create a negative pressure environment to care for a biologically contagious patient. The companies over the years have changed related to the isopod device. You may have one that's made by a company called TBI or by the company Immediate Response Technologies. The video today that we're doing will cover the TBI Corporation isopod. The isopod and its components fit inside this duffel bag and it can be easily rolled out onto a cart or a gurney. There are straps on the bottom of the isopod that can be used to connect it to the gurney or cot that you've laid it on. Be careful that when you go ahead and connect those straps that you don't catch any of the moving parts of your cart. If you are connecting to an ambulance gurney, it may be wise to use the straps that actually come off of the gurney to secure your isopod so that it stays uh, safe and stable on the cart. Once the isopod is open, you can see the straps inside. At the top, you'll see a yellow head pad. That's where the head of your patient needs to go. Make sure that the head of your cart is also um, on that side. You will see a head strap, waist strap, wrist straps, and ankle straps. We wouldn't use any of these straps without a physician order. If you would prefer to use more typical restraints, they can also be connected in much the same way. The blower motor of this isopod looks very much like a filter, and it gets screwed into the foot end of the lower right corner of the isopod. The cord to the blower motor gets connected to the battery and then you'll find the on off switch on the battery itself. The battery now belongs inside this pouch on the outside of the isopod. People often ask about the batteries on the isopod and how long they will last. The best way to determine this is to actually test your own batteries. Go ahead and connect your battery once it's fully charged to the isopod device with all of the filters in place and let it run. Go ahead and time that time frame. Find out how long it actually runs and then you will know exactly how long your batteries will last. If you have extra batteries, go ahead and make sure all of them are always charged so that in a, the case of a real incident, you can go ahead and take both your batteries along in the case one would fail. There are three filters that come with your isopod. They may be HE filters or they may be OVAG HEPA filters. HE stands for high efficiency filters. These should filter out particulates, which would be more than enough for a biological contagion. These larger filters, OV stands for organic vapor, AG stands for acid gas, and the HEPA is high efficiency particulate air filter. These filters increase the protection factor and include some chemical um, protection. So we're gonna go ahead and select our filters and put them onto the isopod. The filters will go on the external side of the head end of the isopod. There are two different places where they can be uh, connected 
And then the most important filter goes on the inside of the isopod just opposite the blower motor. And that will be the last filter before that air blows out the bottom of the isopod. So we want to make sure that that filter is in place and secure. This model of the isopod has a plug on the foot end. All we need to do here is make sure that it's nice and tight. Once the batteries, the blower motor, and the filters are all in place, it's time to assemble the structure of the isopod. So we're going to go ahead and start at the middle here and find the plastic ribs and you'll find that there's a slot and a tab that needs to be put together. On each side, you'll find another one, a foot or so on either side. And then there's also one set of ribs at the bottom and at the top. Once these are connected, we can go ahead and add the spines. And there's a, a tab for each spine at the top of each rib. These plastic ribs and rods give the isopod its structure. Once the ribs and spines are all in place, we can now go ahead, turn on the isopod, and seal it up. The isopod has multiple access points. There are two snorkel ports, one on the head end and one on the foot end. These snorkels are direct lines into the patient care space. We can insert oxygen tubing, IV lines, cardiac monitoring lines. What we need to do is make sure that we have used the Velcro strap to keep that snorkel nice and tight. The other access point we have is a small pass-through. And this is located where the big yellow cap is on the right-hand side. We can go ahead and open that yellow cap and insert small items into that pass-through. Once the items are inside, the care team can retrieve the items from the sleeve. The isopod has many clear panels, and in those clear panels you'll find glove ports. We want to go ahead and wear protective gloves when using these glove ports. We can reach inside and care for our patients as well as interact with the different lines and other equipment to care for our patient. If during that patient care we would breach this glove somehow, perhaps a needle would poke it or the rubber would crack, we want to go ahead and carefully withdraw our hand, trying to contain whatever area was broken, twist off the glove, and then seal that glove with tape. This will prevent any further contamination as well as maintain the negative pressure of the isopod. The isopod is a device that we use to isolate highly infectious patients for transportation. This is not a device that we use often. 
So we want to make sure that we're practicing using our equipment and maintaining it well. We hope that this video will help you to do those things as you work with your isopod and your institution.